I was just getting everything ready for us today. Do you have all your supplies ready? If not, grab them and we'll get started. So today we'll get started with a fun little card game and you can do this a lot of different ways. So you need a deck of cards where you have removed the face cards, kings, queens, jacks, and the jokers, but keep your ace in there because your ace will count as one. And in today's game, we're going to be making 10. So how about removing the tens as well? To get this card game started, we're going to make a little pyramid. So I'm just going to begin setting up my pyramid like this. I've got one card on the top of the pyramid. How many cards do I have here? And then we're going to go to three cards. And I'm going to make six uh, rows here. So now we've got four cards. And that's four rows my fifth row and my final row. So we also are going to have a little discard pile and a pile that we can turn over. So we'll start there. Now the object of our game is to be working to make 10 but we only get to work in rows where a card is exposed. So to start with, no cards on the side or in the middle are exposed. We just have to work with these cards on the bottom, but boy, oh boy, it got so lucky today. Do you see any combination of cards that I could put together to make 10 in my bottom row? <laughs> Did you say that there are a couple of different combinations? I bet you recognized these two numbers right next to each other. Remember we said the ace stands for one, nine, and one. Make, you got it. They make 10, don't they? We got so lucky on that one. So there does happen to be something else that makes 10. We don't even have to get into our other rows yet, do we? You got it. Eight and two also makes 10. We could count on eight, nine, 10. Great. Okay, well, when I look at these cards that are exposed, I have this card, this card, this card, and this card that we could say are exposed. Do any of those cards make 10? If you said no, you're right. So I'm going to go to my pile and turn over a card. Does this card help me make 10 with any of the cards I have laid out before me? You're right. I heard several of you say that I should take the six to go with the four because six and four make 10. We're doing pretty well. Okay, so now again, let's look at the cards we have exposed. It's getting a little slim here. This card, this card, and this card are exposed. Do any of those go together to make 10? Pretty slim pickets. Let's turn over a card. Oh boy, the last time we remembered that six and four make 10, so I know I don't have any fours available. This is looking pretty tricky. Let's try again. Let's see. Does the three help us out at all? If I match three with nine, will that make 10? If I match three with seven, will that make 10? You're right, phew, finally. Seven and three make 10 for us. Okay, now we've got to keep on trying. Oh boy, I can see some combinations that are just out of my reach. Do you see what ones I'm talking about? 
Okay, I don't know what we have coming next. Oh, phew. Do you see what I can match with this one to make 10? Hmm. I have two different choices, don't I? I think I'll go for this one. Nine and one, make 10. All right, oh boy. Guess what? Now this ace is exposed and nine and one, make 10. We are really getting a lot of practice with nine and one making 10. I think you've got the hang of our pyramid game. So I would like to encourage you to either pause the video and play a few rounds at home. You can choose a different target number. You could choose seven or you could choose 11. There are a lot of different numbers, let's say from six to 16, that you could choose and play our pyramid game with. And it's just a great way to warm up and get our math brains going. So I'll clear this away and then we'll move on. Today, I am going to be using our tens frames and I've got some fun little puffs to use today as counters. I want to talk to you a little bit about mental math. We're going to do some together right now. And we want to use the practice of mental math to develop good understanding of numbers. But I really love to start out with items I can touch with my hands. Over time, I'll be moving those numbers in my mind. If I can do it with my hands, I think I can do it in my brain, right? So I want to start with seven plus five, and I want to know what that equals. So let's just try to get my puffs to stay where they belong. Sometimes these puffs want to get away. Can you see that I'm first building the number seven? I do like to ask myself which number is largest and start with that number. And you can see that while I could put my five in all different kinds of ways, I really like to just follow the pattern of the tens frame. So can you easily see that I have seven and five? That's one of the things that's so great about using the frame. Okay. One of the things I love for us to think about is a friendly number. Can you think about what number I'm talking about when I say, what's the friendliest number out there? Yes, that's right. 10 is so friendly. And we want as often as possible to use 10 to help us solve our math problems. When I'm thinking about making 10, how many are missing in the sevens column? Did you say three? How about we go to the five and have three from the five moved over to make 10 on this side? Now we can see that seven plus five is equal to 10 plus two. And you know what that equals. That equals 12, right? So let's take a look at the same thing with our equation. For a moment, I want to remove that information. Let's do what we just did on our tens frames with our equation. What we said was, um, we looked at the five and we realized that if we wanted to make 10, we could move three from the five over to the seven. But we had to also recognize that there were two puffs left on that side. When I join these friends up, I have my 10 plus my two, which gives us our 12. Now over time, I will want you to do all these steps in your mind. But for now, let's continue to build and show. We'll build it and we'll show it, okay? Let's do another one, are you ready? This time, let's do, hmm, I think I do wanna to switch to subtraction. It's a little bit different. 
14 minus 8. Okay, I don't have 14 yet. Let's get there. 10, 11, 12, <laughs> 13, 14. All right, now I'm going to take 8 away from my 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Were you able to see that there would be 2 left? So now we can say that 14 minus 8 is equal to 4 plus 2. We could just slide these two over here and recognize that we have 6. Okay, so let's take a look at what that would look like on our equation. 14 is made out of 10 and 4. Now if you prefer to show it this way, that's okay too. The reason I like to put my 10 here, however, is because I know I'm going to work with that friendly 10 and this 8. 10 minus 8 equals 2. Remember how I showed you at the end 4 plus 2 equals 14 minus 8. And so in the end we can say that that equals 6. Okay, what I want you to pretend is that you have a dime. How much does a dime equal? That's right, a dime equals 10 cents. But I'm also going to give you 7 pennies. And it's easy to see that I'm giving you seven as I stay in my tens frame here. Okay, now what I want to say is that I'm going to send you to the market and you are going to buy something for nine cents. That's kind of silly. What could we really get for nine cents? I'm not sure, but let's just pretend that's what we're doing. When you go to the market, if you have to purchase something for nine cents, which combination of these coins will you use? We don't have quite enough here, do we? So we'll have to use our dime, won't we? If I give my dime over to the person who is selling things, the clerk, will they give me anything back? What I'm trying to purchase costs nine cents. <laughs> and I'm paying with 10 cents. What will they give me back? That's right. The clerk owes me. And what they owe me is a penny. So I can now say I started out with 17 cents, right? 17 cents. I owed for the thing that I wanted nine cents. We used the dime and so we had our seven pennies left over. We said 10 minus nine equals one, so we got one cent back and we had seven to begin with. That leaves us with how many cents altogether after our exchange with the clerk? That's right. We're left with eight cents. Okay, for the moment, I'm going to set my tens frame aside. But if at home this is feeling really tricky, please use your tens frame. If you're really struggling and you're saying, oh boy, I don't really know what you mean, then the way to solve that is to show it with items. Okay, so I've got 12 and I want to take seven away, but I'm gonna show us the balance of the equation by doing what we've been doing all along. Remember that friendly number we wanna to get to work with, right? But what's left? We're working with number bonds here. 12, two and 10 make 12, okay, so. Once we say 10 minus seven, what do we get? Oh yeah, that's right. We get a three. 
Now we have to remember this piece over here. All righty. The reason I like to say that this is like a balance is I want you to understand that the equal sign has a special meaning. It means that all of the stuff on this side of the equation is the same in value as the stuff on this side of the equation. So 12 minus 7 equals 3 plus 2, and you know that that equals 5. The longer we do this over time, we begin to memorize, for instance, that 12 minus 7 equals 5. But I prefer for you to think it out this way before you jump to the memorization. This helps us develop what we call number sense, a way of thinking about numbers that helps our brain really grow. It's time for you to go work in your textbook and workbook, and I can't wait to see you back here next time.